I am ready. I'm not sure if I'm ready, but I, I, I feel like God has given me something, and so I, I just want to dive right into it. If you have followed the sermon series, I, I started the sermon series now that's called Change Lives, Change Lives. Amen? Because we believe we want to be a church where God can just use us, uh, each, each one of us, right? Individually, God can use us. He wants to transform our life. That's the starting point. And God can use our life for everybody around us. Uh, this morning, I just want to start asking a question like, did you ever have an experience where God just used you for a person around you? If that's a word of encouragement or something, maybe you just prayed for somebody or maybe you just looked at somebody and you felt like God came across in this moment. You know, if you're like this, go ahead and raise your hand. I believe we're a church full of people that God can use for his kingdom. There's a lot of broken hearts out there. There's a lot of brokenness out there. There's all sorts of brokenness out there. And God has the solution for it. He has provided it 2,000 years ago in the cross, in the redemption of his son, Jesus Christ, and it's living and active through us. Do you believe that? We are the ambassadors for Christ. We are spreading the fragrance of Christ, that we're the aroma of Christ wherever we go. There will be one Sunday when I really want to preach on that, the being the aroma of Christ. And you know what I'm, I have in mind? I'm going to walk into the sanctuary. I'm going to have a ton of perfume on deal the old run or whatever but i just want to smell that everybody's like whoa what is walking in right now just as a sermon illustration when you are the aroma of christ you cannot help yourself but walk into the room and people around you feel that there's something different about you when i was in, on missions for a year in nepal and we, we witnessed to a lot of people, everybody on the road were just in the Himalayas and just tracking and handing out Christian literature, uh, the gospel of, of John and Luke. And uh, was, we were just witnessing to people and I could always tell when somebody came toward me and he was a Christian. Some of God made me so sensitive uh, after, uh, I don't know, maybe half a year into doing that. I always noticed the difference between people that just come toward you and they're just blank and people that come toward you and they have this, the spirit of the living God inside of them. They already come to you with a smile and there's something in their eyes that tells you there's something inside those eyes. And that is God. Amen. And God wants us, that wants the church and each one of us, we are the church to be like this. So today... I'm going to be talking, uh, this is the third one, I'm going to be talking about this power from on high. Power from on high. This is when we come in, in the book of Acts to Pentecost. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hope you got your coffee this morning. <clears throat> and I just want to start again with just maybe flipping back to the passage in Luke uh, where we... Just this last thing uh, that the evangelist Luke recorded in his gospel. When Jesus was coming out of the grave, he appeared to the disciples. And then basically at the ascension, at the farewell, Jesus is telling them something. Thus it is written, again, uh, this is in, in Luke chapter 24, verse uh, 46. And it says, thus it is written that Christ should suffer. And on the third day he must rose, rise from the dead. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins shall be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, even to Hutchinson, beginning from Jerusalem until it reaches Hutchinson, Minnesota. Amen? And you are, and that is bump the person next to you, say, you are, the Bible is talking about you, buddy. Tell him, you are the witness, witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm sending you the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you're clothed with the power from on high. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's something there, I tell you. But I tell you one thing too, there's something there that a lot of churches miss today. I, I don't know what you're, I don't want to offend anybody this morning, 
or talk bad about other denominations and backgrounds, but I always feel like when it comes to passages like this that talks about the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Bible is full of it. Uh, we, the Apostle Paul was so drenched in the Spirit, he was always talking about the power, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that there is something in that. And how, how can you look over all those passages and just think, oh, yeah, this, this, is, this is the quickening of the Holy Spirit, you know, when, when we first believed that there's something more there. And there's something more there that God has assigned for us. You know, it's interesting that it says, clothe it with power from on high. You know, when you get up in the morning and you change or you get out of the shower and you get dressed and you've got stuff on and it's cold out there or whatever it is, but you throw on a coat, right? You wrap yourself in, in something when you walk out there. Otherwise, you're not ready. You go out in the cold and you start getting cold. You get into chills and you sh- start shivering. You need something on. You clothe yourself with something appropriate for your surrounding. And here Jesus says basically the same, just wait in the city. Wait indoor until my Father in heaven gives his coat, (laughs) wraps it around you so that you are ready for the world all around you. There is something about the presence, the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit that we're supposed to have, that we're supposed to wear on us just like a cloth that wraps us in. And as we walk outside, all of a sudden we become the power of God, God's extension, where God just starts moving through us. You know, I, the, I don't know when it was. It, it just dawned on me this last week again as I prepared for the sermon. I was a, a while back already, and I saw um, somebody sent something to me about like how a church does like the opening activities, and I forgot who that was. Maybe it was one of the interns, and he sent me the, the, the link to, to a church. And so really powerful. Uh, um, I think it, it, it's a great church. Um, they have everything together with uh, the just the advertisement and the announcements and everything. So you, you watch it on YouTube and it pulls up and all the music comes out and the writing comes out and I'm like, man, that's cutting edge. That's really cool. I want that, right? And so, and then a, a guy, it must, must have been a staff member or somebody that they recorded and he, he stands there and he says, hey, thank you guys. Thanks for watching Weird Church so-and-so uh, and we want you to join. Uh, we've got no weird stuff here and then he just keeps talking. And I'm like, what, what does he mean? What, what does he mean with advertising his church and making it uh, tasteful for everybody who's just watching online and in that saying, we've got no weird stuff here? I'm like, okay. I think what he's talking about is exactly this. It is talking about the power from on high the power of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know when the Holy Spirit comes, you just can't hold it. You start crying. Some people start laughing. Some people start, I don't know, falling over because God's presence is just so strong. And if you seek it, you get it. It's as simple as that. And I'm, I'm glad to be a Pentecostal. I really am. And so I want to advertise our church. We sometimes got weird stuff here. (laughs) Amen. But I tell you, it's not man-made weird stuff. It's the stuff that comes straight from heaven. It's the stuff that God has... Just think about the colorful cult of Joseph. Somebody has hand-sewn all of this thing together so intricately. God, has, God is spirit, and everybody who comes to God must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and he gives his spirit, which is his presence, and he wraps you all in with his presence. Did you ever spend time in prayer with the living God? And you just feel so overwhelmed that you just start sobbing or that you just start laughing or you start breaking out and you open up your mouth and something comes out and you don't know what it is. The Bible calls it the speaking in tongues, right? Because his presence is just so strong on you. That is this, that is this experience. You know, and I mean, people can go, uh, I guess, berserk with it too. I, 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 we, once Jan and I, we, we met an evangelist who was here in town. I, th- I believe we went to a hotel somewhere, 
and they had a swimming pool, and uh, just talking there to the lady, there was a guy standing next to it, and he, he, I, I could tell right away that he was a Christian. And uh, so he started and actually talking with us, and he introduced himself. He was an evangelist. Somebody called him here in town. He was an evangelist, and he just came here, invited us at the church somewhere to kind of give them a boost. And we engaged a little bit in a conversation with him, and I said, oh, yeah, so we talk about services, how many services they have and everything. And he also said, yeah, well, they've got cool services. They're literally swinging from the chandeliers. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, may, well, maybe we're not quite that crazy. But, you know, we don't want to limit what God can do. And if you cut out in, in your life because of fear or because of holding back, because you're not sure about what God will do to you when you come under the heavy presence of God, you will not experience it. But I tell you that God is a gentleman. God, God's got everything there. The Holy Spirit, we all say, is a gentleman. And when you come into his presence, God's love is there. And he equips you. He quickens your spirit. He does something inside of you that nothing else can do. Not playing a video game. Not even shooting the biggest buck in the forest. Nothing can do this what the Holy Spirit can do in a moment. When he wraps you in just like with a blanket. You know... But there is a distinction, and a lot of churches just hold to, to, to the first half of it, and they talk about uh, that we have received the Holy Spirit at our salvation, and which is true. Uh, we have in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, uh, it talks about, and it says, And hope does not put to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given us. Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul, the same guy who talks about being baptized in the Holy Spirit and lays hands on other people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the same guy talks about that we have received the Holy Spirit when we believed. And it's true, you know, when, when you come to Jesus Christ and you accept him as your personal Lord, all of a sudden your spirit comes alive in you. All of a sudden you start seeing things in, 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 in the light of, of God. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, uh, there is just multiple, it, just in the chapter 3, I highlighted with yellow, I don't know if you ever color in your Bible, I don't think it's sacrilegious, I love it, it kind of looks like, you know, Helen has gotten hold of my Bible. But I, I have here all the words where it says spirit highlighted. And it's amazing how the Apostle Paul writes in chapter 3 uh, all the time about the spirit. Uh, and you show that uh, you are the letter from Christ delivered to us, written not with ink but by the spirit of the living God. And then in verse 6, uh, uh, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. In verse 8, uh, will not the ministry of the Spirit will, will have even more uh, glory? And then in the very last uh, verse, in, in verse 18, and we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image as we're looking at Jesus, we're being transformed into what we're looking at, into every, the characteristics of Jesus, into the, from one degree of glory to another. From, for this comes from the Lord who is spirit. It, it talks about that we are in relationship with a God who is spirit and we have the spirit once we believe. But there is something else. There's something else too, and that is God's empowering presence. And we have an example of that in, in 1 Corinthians in chapter 12. The, the Apostle Paul talks a lot about uh, the spiritual gifts and everything. But in chapter 2, it talks about, um, let me just really, really quick. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, it says, And my speech, when I came to you, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words, of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and in power. What is he talking about? And I think a lot of churches miss that. If you're, if you're unfamiliar with this empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul, he says, when I come to you, uh, I'm not just talking the smooth talk. I'm not just talking about something that, he, that sounds good, 
Uh, and I'm not just, you know, the Corinthian church, they had a, a lot of division in the church, and somebody, Paul, Peter, and somebody, Apollos, and somebody, Jesus, and somebody, uh, uh, Paul. And Paul says, like, are we all divided? We all uh, we share the same Christ. We're all in Christ. We all have the same spirit. And, and so he, he goes into arguments uh, like this, and he says, well, you know, when I came to you, I, I, I don't have to be smart. I don't have all the answers. But when I come to you, I come in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. You know, that means when he came to the Corinthians, there is a powerful presence that came with him. That's just coming with him. As he walks into the room, the presence of God walks with him into this room. And it, it's there. It's real. In Romans 15, of verse 3, I'm flipping around here a little bit, but I, I really want you to understand the difference. Uh, sorry, verse 13. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Again, the same thing. Do you remember what it says? For the, the kingdom is not a matter of talking. I, I preached a sermon on that, but of power. There is something about the presence of God that is really powerful. There is something about the Holy Spirit that is just really powerful. You know, you can go day in and day out believing in God, being saved, going to heaven, having the assurance that you're going to heaven and have never really tasted the powerful presence of God. The really powerful presence that wants to lead your life that wants to navigate you. But if you want to step out into what God has for your life, if you want to operate, if we want to operate all our life based on what we can do, we can stay on that level. We can stay in where we feel comfortable. We can stay in just believing God. We can stay in believing that the Holy Spirit exists. But if we want to surrender ourselves to God for him to do what only God can do, we need to come under this powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And it's not a different spirit, really. It's one and the same spirit. It's because God is spirit. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, it says it very clearly. Let's go there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and this is toward the end. Let's start in verse 18 where it says, and we all with unveiled faces behold the glory of the Lord and being transformed into the same image from one degree to another. For this comes from the Lord who is spirit. God is spirit. We all, we worship the same God, right? As many people here this morning worship God, we're all having the same God. We all have part of the same, it's the same spirit. Why then, you know, some people, uh, when when. Pentecostalism spread when the fire was, was caught in the Sousa Street and uh, there was a lot of onlookers that just looked at, at the Pentecostal movement and really judged it and said, you know, those are the bakers and shakers or whatever, all the fancy names that they came up with with the Pentecostal denomination. And they judged it and they were like, yeah, whatever, this, this, those are just the weird guys. But, you know, in reality, it is the same God, it is the same spirit, it's just a different dose of it. You know, when you talk about the love of God, the love of God can be very different. Did you ever think about that? The love of God can just be a, really a, a mild, a kind feeling. You just feel the love of God. But the love of God can also be a jealous love, a hot, burning love. We see this all the time in the Bible. God, God, God's presence has different degrees. You can have a small degree of God's presence, and God can just overwhelm you with his presence. And there's only one person who is in charge of that faucet. And who is that? That's us. That's us. We are in charge of that faucet. We can determine by what we want to expose ourselves to by if this, is, if this faucet is off or if this faucet is, is on. You know, this morning I, I got bugged by all my notifications on my smartphone, on my iPhone. 
And I, I literally went into Facebook and I switched off for the first time all the notifications. Like, you know what? Just leave me alone. Because <laughs> the thing, even though I, I don't want to look into it, but if I just see this little tiny red number there, that there is like four or five notifications, it bugs me. I want to go there and I want to see it, right? But the moment I do that, then I see other things and I feel like I'm getting carried away and I'm like, man, shoot, it's time to leave already. And this morning I was like, okay, enough with this. I just want to switch off. I'm not saying that everybody has to do that, but I just switched off because like, man, God's, God's presence is here. And God is always craving for, for, for our time that we give him the best of the day, that we give him the... the, the uh, our, our bodies is a living sacrifice so that he can fill us, right? But we get so distracted with everything around us. But it is only after we realize that we are in charge of this faucet. And if we, if we sometimes we are so busy, distracted with everything around us that we don't even come and be calm before God and, and just listening to God and, and just wait upon the Lord like the Bible says. And this is actually... Once we do this, we get calm in our life. We start listening to God, like, like I preached about Mary, singing at the feet of Jesus. Without, uh, Martha had all the being anxious and having the troubles of life, but just listening to Jesus, waiting upon the Lord. All of a sudden, this faucet is being turned on. And the, the, the glory of God can just flow into your life. The love of God flows into your life. There is something there about God that we can regulate the access and, and the power of God's presence, uh, we can regulate. Now, why do we need the presence of God for witness? Um, you know, there, there's somebody, there is a missionary that we got to know and we really love them. And they, they came also from, from a, a Baptist background and they were going to my hometown, uh, to Vienna. And I know the Viennese people, right? I, I shared once, those can be the, uh, I think they were on, in the world ranking among the two most unfriendliest city in the world. Like, those are my people, <laughs> right? And so this missionary was going there and he wanted to meet with us just to hear a little bit about like how Vienna is, how the people are, meet a real Austrian, right? And so we went out to Togrigil and we, we sat down there and we talked with them and I love them. They're great people and they believe in the Holy Spirit. They come from a Baptist background, but they believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and they believe it. But because of his background, because he's sent from, from that denomination, he had to sign a contract that says this, the gifts of the Spirit are not for today, a period. You know, and I, I'm not, like I'm, I'm glad you believe in the Holy Spirit because if you go to that country, you will need all the help you can get. <laughs> you need to listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you will just not know what to do and you need to wait upon the Lord until He clothes you with this power from on high, until He wraps you in and then you step out and whatever your hand finds to do, wherever your foot leads you, whatever is right in front of you and you're going to walk right into it and the presence of God through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is going to be right there with you. Hallelujah. You know, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was before I had to go to the military. Uh, in, back in Austria, we had civil service or military service you could pick. I picked the military service just because it was shorter. It was eight months instead of 12 months, a whole year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the military. But I, I knew it's going to be a sleepless time and uh, somebody's constantly going to be yelling at me and telling me what to do. You don't have any freedom. And I knew in my heart that I need something. I, I need something more. I'm already struggling with keeping my devotion. I, I knew that I wanted something more. And um, my grandma had a, had a book in, uh, in her room. It was from Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, it was just his story and, and just everything. And once I started reading this, all of a sudden God caught a hold of my heart and was like, there is so much more of me out there. And I really felt like there is such a powerful presence out there and that we're almost not tapping into. We're, we're just not living it. It's like, where, where is that? I don't see it in my home church. I don't see it in my personal life, but it's there. 
Somebody else experienced it. I'm sure I can experience it too. And so I, I, I made this commitment. I said, God, I just need this boost. I, it's on a calendar. In three weeks, I have to go to military. I'm going to walk through that gate. I'm going to be shut in for two months. And they're going to drill me hard, right? And I, I need extra power. I need something for my life. And so I was just praying and fasting. I was on my knees. And then when, when I was, we had a, a separate house somewhere. And it was in the winter. It was cold. And I was just there praying and praying and praying and all of a sudden I felt God's presence so thick just filling up this room <laughs> it just brought me to my knees I was on my knees and I was just sobbing and just crying out and the, the more and, and I felt like it got stronger and stronger all of a sudden it just opened up my mouth and I started speaking in tongues just like this babbling of a heavenly language that we don't know what it is it's like a heart language we just talk secrets to God it's just this expression of an overwhelming feeling of God and Sure enough, after I walked away from this, I felt like there is something different. <laughs> I can't explain it what it is. If, if you explain it to somebody, they will think that you're crazy. You know, they will lead you, here's the mental, mental health institution, you know. Just go there. But there is something about the presence of God that is utmost powerful. When we come here to Acts chapter 2, this is what changes lives. If we want to have a changed life to change lives, if we don't have the, the powerful presence of God in our life, it's all going to be social work and loving on other people. But it's hardly going to transform spiritually other people's lives because you can only transform spiritually what is spiritually in you and it's the it the, the transformation that's going on in the changed lives of other people will not happen because this they start disciplining themselves or they drop doing this and they will always revert back to but if they're filled with the powerful presence of God if they get a taste of what God can do in their life and all of a sudden priorities change their lives change they start talking differently all of a sudden stuff comes out of the mouth that their family has never heard from them but the, because the, the spirit is activating something in those, in those people but it's done in the spirit and not in the flesh and if we want to have have changed lives that change lives it's not going to happen without the powerful presence of the holy spirit in life amen? amen we need that you know any ministry without the power of the holy spirit is a love ministry and we have a, a lot of a lot of denominations that, that do that they, they love on people and it's, it's not wrong. You know, we, we are supposed to love on people, but there is something extra. There is something from God that God wants us because there is something that only God can do. Amen? They, we can do it. We can talk with somebody until they're blue in their face. <laughs> and it's not going to change their life. They're just going to walk away and keep living their life just like they always did. But if the Spirit of God comes with it, something changes. You know, when I, I, when I was with the uh, seniors this last week, I, I just used a, a scripture from Joel, from Joel chapter 2. This is the promise uh, of Pentecost. This is the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, not just the presence of the Spirit, which is always there in the world, but the outpouring of God's presence, the outpouring of His Spirit into people's lives, not into trees, some people worship trees. Some people worship other things. Not into something, but into the people. And here in Joel 2, we have this, this, this prophecy. And it says in, in verse 28, And it shall come to pass. <laughs> you know, this is redeemed Israel after Israel has come back from exile. And they were looking forward to this day of the Lord. And here God speaks to them and he says, It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and the female servant, in those days I will pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in heaven and on earth and keeps going and going and going. God cannot show the wonders in heaven and on earth without the outpouring of his spirit. 
And this is what we need to have for our own personal life. You know, God's spirit is a prophetic spirit. It utters the things from God. And with this, I just want to demonstrate it, uh, what, 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 what this is uh, from Ezekiel. If you, if, j- just turn to Ezekiel chapter 1. There is so much in the Old Testament about the Spirit of God. And, but one of the passages for me that illustrates the best reason why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, not just to live a life believing about God and believing, but why do we need to have the infilling? Why do we need to have this charge of the Holy Spirit? There is this picture in Ezekiel and prophecy, just this vision that God is giving the prophet Ezekiel right away in chapter 1. Starting in verse 4, uh, you have this long description about what Ezekiel sees when, when God is just coming into him and he's showing him all these things. And there is stuff that we just don't understand. But Ezekiel is being shown uh, four living creatures. And the four living creatures, uh, they have four faces. They have like a face of a human, a face of a lion, a face of an ox. This is in, in verse 10. Uh, For the likeness of their face, each uh, had a human face. The four had the faces of a lion um, on the one side, and and four, uh, the four had the faces of an ox on the left side, and the four had the face of an eagle. So it, you have four faces, like a living creature that has four faces. But then in verse twelve, it says something about that that regards it with with the spirit, because it says wherever the spirit would go. Wherever God wants the living creatures to go, they went without turning as they went. Then the same thing about this, this whole weird card that we're seeing here in, in, in verse 15 starting. And I looked uh, at the living creatures and I saw a wheel on the earth beside the living creatures, like four wheels. Um, and it's like this card. And then in verse 20, it says the same thing. Wherever the spirit wanted to go, they went, and the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. So wherever the thing wanted to go, wherever, no, wherever the Holy Spirit wanted it to go, without discussion about it, without, I don't know, doubting about it, it was this immediately going after. I just want to demonstrate it with something my, my son brought home. He, he won at VBS a really cool car. This is a remote control car, and it's huge. I, I, I believe I, I, I talked already about it once, right? Hey, I'm going to illustrate. Well, probably have to do it up here so you can see it. Uh, so he brought this home because he invited a, a lot of friends to VBS. And... Something happened to this car recently. Liam said, you know, when he switches it on, second, I need to switch it on, what it does sometimes is the wheel gets stuck in one direction. So there's something wrong about it. Maybe we have to return it or something. But, you know, when I, when I read this in Ezekiel, wherever the Spirit of God wanted to go, the thing, the thing moved. <laughs> you know, I believe God wants us to be just like this. It might sound weird, but think it through. It's like when God wants to save a world around you, he wants to navigate you. He wants to speak through your mouth. He wants to look at other people with your eyes. He wants to be, he wants your hand and feet to be the very hand and feet of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's like when God just says move, let's just move. God wants to go back. Let's just go back. This is cool. I need to do this more often. You know, it's like God wants it because he wants to do something. It, the car doesn't talk back to me. <laughs> Did you notice that? The car doesn't like, hey, wait a second. I'm, I think there might be a different. Can we talk about this for a second before you hit this button? Can we talk about, I, I think this looks more rosy over there. Can we just go over there? It doesn't talk back. This is how it goes. You can turn it and spin around. Just think about this. Can God do this with your life? 
It's just really simple question. Can God do this with your life? Wherever God says go, go. Whenever God says speak, it comes out of you. You know, this little mistake here, it, it doesn't do it right now. Bummer. I was actually hoping it would do it. It, had, it was broken. We thought it was broken there for a while. Liam could testify of it. Because as soon as you switch it on, those front wheels, they get stuck to one side. And, and you have this weird long noise that sounds like this. Oh, sorry, the other one. Do you hear that? It's like, it's stuck, right? Because I, I hit the button, but this is what it does. It's like, I'm broken. That's very often how we are. That's very often how, how we are. We have, we've, we've got something. If there is sin in our life, if there is an oppression in our life from the enemy who is just, I don't know, maybe he's giving you nightmares. Maybe he's doing something else in your life and he's distracting you. Maybe he, he causes you to have an adulterous affair or something. All of a sudden, you end up like this. And God's like, man, we got to fix this <laughs> before I can move you again. We've got to do something because this is, this is not helping anyone, <laughs> right? This, but when, when you fix this, when you come to God and when you repent to the living God, like, Lord, I'm sorry for this. In, in the cross, we have this healing. I want to come under your coverage again. Please cover me. Forgive me my sins. All of this is gone. And all of a sudden, God can move you again and use you. Do you understand that? There is something about the presence and what, 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 I mean, I'm not having a cord here. I'm not kicking this car with my leg, right? I'm not kicking this car, but it goes. What makes this car go? Okay, I'm not an electrician. I do not know how, how this works, this wireless. But there is something invisible that makes this car move, right? And it's the same thing with the Spirit of God. There is the invisible presence of God that you cannot see, you, but you can feel it because it directs you. It tells you something. It moves you forth and back. That's what God needs from us. You know, oops. Amen, yes. I want you, if this is the only thing that sticks from this sermon to you, then I think that already was a win. Because <laughs> where are you in your life? Is there something like this that just pulls you in one direction or the other direction? I just want to keep going here a little bit. Uh, we are talking actually about Acts chapter 2, but this is important as it comes to Acts chapter 2 because as God is about in his business to change the world in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. He needs to pour out this spirit that he has promised in Joel chapter 2. He wants to pour out his spirit, and this spirit is, is, is going out. This is the spirit of prophecy, and he is doing something. But now in Acts chapter 2, and it's a short passage, and it talks about when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Underline the word together. And suddenly, there came a wind that came from heaven, a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues, underline divided, divided tongues as of fire appeared on them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, there's two things here, together and tongues, not, not the opposite of to, together, but as the tongues divided that I just want to uh, mention here in, in, in closing. You know, the Spirit of God, when we talk about revival, when we talk about being filled with the Spirit of God, God cannot do it unless there is unity in the house. It says together. 
as they were not, as they were all about in their own business, as they were all scattered throughout, uh, as they were all scattered throughout Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world, then the Holy Spirit just kindled the fire. No, as they were together in one place. There is something about a spirit of unity. In the spirit of unity, the Holy Spirit can move. In the spirit of unity, the Holy Spirit can fall. And you can have unity or disunity even within your own heart. If God wants your heart, and if God wants to pour out his spirit on your heart, and you feel like you have a divided heart, it won't happen. Because God needs this unified heart when you're all in for God, when you're all surrendered to God, then God can fill you with his spirit. It's very important. In Ezekiel, in this picture that we talked about, the four faces, but they all had one body, correct? The four wheels, but they were all joined to one cart. There is unity. There is, when, when the Holy Spirit wants to do something, there is unity. In the Sousa Street, a hundred years ago, when, when the, when the uh, revival started, when a Pentecostal movement was born, they were all together. It was a Bible college, and they started studying Acts chapter 2. They, they read it, and they were like, what is this? Nobody has ever talked about what is this? If the Bible says it, it's, it's got to be real. It's got to be available for us. And so the, the, the teacher encouraged the students to unite in prayer and in fasting and to seek after this. And after a while, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell. At a Bible college, at a seminary, the Holy Spirit fell in the Sousa Street. But it was because they were all together. And the second thing is, one of the things that I have never heard before, not even in Pentecostal doctrine, which, which I think is, is, is funny because it's so clearly there. In verse 3, it says, and divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Now, if you have um, a Bible and you have a little number there on those words, when it says divided, um, it's the same Greek word that was actually used when they divided Jesus' clothes, which means it's one piece of cloth and people started ripping it apart and dividing it. Do you get that picture? And then there is something else when it says, and in, in, in Luke chapter 28, uh, verse 17, when, they, when, Jesus, when, they start, when Jesus broke the bread and started dividing it, that's the same word in the Greek that's used here. It's like Jesus took the bread, one piece of bread, and he started breaking it apart. Now when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes and then it starts dividing. You know, we always have this picture that uh, the, at, at the day of Pentecost, everybody is in, was in one room and on every, uh, like Reinhard Bonke always says, there's a flame for every head. <laughs> you know, it's like well, everybody has just this experience and the fire just falls and everyone equally. But actually it says the Holy Spirit came and then it started spreading from the people. Sometimes a fire is caught and not kindled. It kindles inside of you, but it's caught somewhere else. When this church here so many years ago went through a period of revival, it didn't start here. It was caught when they went to where? Brownsville? When you guys went down there, it was caught and these people came back here and brought something back. An awareness of what God can do. A fire inside of them. Did you ever uh, light a candle? Instead of lighting everyone's candle, you just light one and then the, the people light other people's candle. This, at the day of Pentecost, this is what it talks and that was the reason why unity was necessary. Because without this unity, this dividing, this spreading of God's fire is not possible. There is something about living together in unity in your life groups, in your household, as family members together in your, as, with your spouse and with your children. If there is disunity, if there is fight, if there is bickering going on, the Holy Spirit cannot do what he would like to do. There needs to be unity in the house. There needs to be prayer in the house. There needs to be a seeking of God together in the house. And as this is there, then when the Holy Spirit fills one person, it starts spreading. 
And I, tell, I guarantee you that's what you want for your family. I guarantee you that's what you want at your workplace. That's what you want in your school. That's what you want wherever you go. It's for the Holy Spirit to get a hold of you, to cloak you, to wrap you in with this being clothed with the power from on high. And all of a sudden, it starts spreading. It starts spreading. It starts spreading. This is how God does what only He can do. We can love on every person, and we're called to love on, on widows and orphans, and we, it's our obligation too. But there's things that God needs to do, that God wants to do, that can only be done through his, through his presence of his powerful spirit. And he does that through us. And this is a part of this change lives, change life. That as we talk further through the book of Acts, I really want you to get this picture in Acts chapter 2. Uh, there's a principle about unity. There's a principle about the togetherness and that dividing, that, that we're, we're kindling the fire in the people that sit next to us, in the people that we come in contact with. And this is how it spreads. Amen? Amen. 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 Here, let's stand up together. All the teams, you guys can come forward. If, if you're here this morning and you, you want prayer and you feel like, you know what? I have never felt this. I do not even know, I have never heard before about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or um, baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a, 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 a um, I don't know, a trick or something. It is ba basically, it, it was a terminology put behind something, an experiencing of God's presence. It's like you dip yourself into something. Uh, the word baptizo means actually from, from when ships were sunk and they went all the way down to the ground. Or when, color, when, when clothes were colored with stains, when you stain something, you dip it into something. That's what the Bible uses. You need to dip yourself into the presence of God. You cannot do that if you don't seek the presence of God in the first place, amen? There needs to be the presence of God. There needs to be the learning, understanding, and everything about the presence of God. And once, once you got this, and you know that this is what you want, and your own stuff is not what you want, but this is what you want, you start throwing yourself in there. You start seeking God. You start listening to God. So as I close the service here, if you need prayer, if you want more of this, come and, and, and just talk with our altar team here and very soon actually we're going to have an encounter weekend and I, I brought this up here too on this encounter weekend we're going to just take time with God we're going to, amen, we're going to take time with God. We're going to pray. We're going to soak in God's presence. If you feel like you need a breakthrough in your life, you need freedom from something in your life, or you're, if you feel like that your life is powerless and you're, just, you're tired of doing it on your own, you want this power of God in your life, sign up for the Encounter Weekend. Come join us. It's just going to be a Friday and a Saturday. Not very long. We're going to be out on, on, on a Saturday at noon. But we're going to be out different. <laughs> Amen. And that's what we look forward to. Just having this feeling of the Holy Spirit. Doing something in the life. Taking bondages off. If we feel like there was something. Just coming into the presence of God. And let Him do what He wants to do in our life. Amen. I want to encourage you. Sign up. Uh, this encounter weekend is for you. We have limited uh, space up there, so don't miss it. But we're going to offer it. Uh, we want to offer it at least twice a year. So, Father, I just thank you this morning. I thank you that as we talk about changed lives, changed lives, we cannot ignore the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We cannot ignore the powerful presence of your Spirit. Father, so often we have gone dry. So often, Father, we have ministered half-hearted with just words of love. And we are disappointed when the world around us doesn't change, when our circumstances don't change. And sometimes we even start blaming you. Father, forgive us. We know that there is something that we can surrender ourselves to, and that is your powerful presence. Father, we ask you, help us in this understanding. And if our hearts are in a place where we're not yearning for your presence, just like a deer that pants off the water, King David wrote, then, Father, draw us in. Draw our hearts. Give us this hunger. 
give us this desire for your presence to come into your presence and to receive from you and then fill us father with the stuff that you've got for us we want to trade our stuff in for your stuff because your stuff is what will change this world in our lives and through us father and in the lives around us we give ourselves to you this morning and we thank you for your presence in jesus mighty name amen amen Amen. bless you guys have a wonderful week stay here for prayer